Shalom everybody. In today's video, we will be discussing the gate of the written Torah. And as we discover its mysteries, we will learn much about literal interpretations, the secret of scholar demons, and much more. Without further ado, let us begin. And as always, a QR code to a free PDF copy of this Sefer, Likute Yira, is available at the beginning of this video. There are also physical copies of it made available at bookbaby.com and amazon.com. Simply type the name Likute Yira. Part 2. The Written Torah Tifreth is the secret of the written Torah, as it is written in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 3. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Commentary Write, Ketav, refers to the written Torah, which is positioned in Tifreth, in example, the heart. It is also written in Yehetkel chapter 36, verse 26. I will remove your heart of stone, an example, literal interpretation. And it is written, stone tablets like the original ones, and I will write on them the words. Exodus chapter 34 verse 1. From this we derive that the stone refers to the written Torah. And from this, we also derive that I will remove your heart of stone means the simple and literal interpretations. With this understanding, let us continue. And this is because it is written, Yudke Vavke hardened the heart of Pharaoh. An example, literal interpretation hardens the heart of its reader. And instead of loving Hashem and his neighbor, he esteems his neighbor cursed and himself cursed. Because it was stated in the previous gate, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 28, a perverse man divides friends. And this is the very reason he is perverse, because he divides the Holy One, blessed be he, from his Shekhinah and prolongs our exile. It is written of them in the Zohar in Book 1, Bereshis, section Mixed Multitude. 229. Of the Giborim, the mighty ones, the third group in the mixed multitude, it is written, the same were mighty men of old, men of renown, men with a name. Genesis chapter 6 verse 4. These descended from the side of those about whom it is written, let us build us a city and a tower, and let us make us a name. Genesis chapter 11 verse 4. That is the generation that witnessed the separation of the races. They, this group of the mixed multitude, build synagogues and yeshivot, putting the scroll of the Torah and a crown upon its top, not in the name of Hashem, instead to make themselves a name, as it is written, and let us make us a name, the children of the other side. An example, all of those who follow literal interpretation, creating religious institutions, overcame Israel, the keepers of the oral Torah, who are like the dust of the earth, disregarded, they rob them their insights, shattering their work. Of them it is written, the waters, an example of the evil inclination that has dominion over all who read the written Torah alone, prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, an example against the oral Torah. With this, we'll see what the Zohar states. The passage is to be found in book one of the Zohar, in section 20 called the five groups in the mixed multitude. 229, of the Giborim, the mighty ones, the third group of the mixed multitude that was mixed with Israel. It is written, the same were mighty men of old, men of renown, literally men with a name. 
These descended from those, the side about whom it is said, let us build us a city and a tower and let us make us a name. Horatius chapter 11, verse four. That is the generation which witnessed the separation of the races. They, this group of the mixed multitude, build synagogues and yeshivot, putting the scroll of the Torah and a crown upon its top. As described in the verse, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach the heaven, but it is not done in the name of Hashem. Instead, it is done to make themselves a name, as it is written, and let us make us a name. The children of the other side overcame Israel, who are blessed to be like the dust of the earth. They robbed them, shattering their work. The synagogue and yeshivot that they had built, and of them it is written, and the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, which means that the klipo and the other side, which are called waters, destroyed the earth as they expanded. This third group in the mixed multitude is equivalent to the sphera of Bina of the Klippa. Torah is called water, and the earth is the secret of the oral Torah. An example, and the earth opened its mouth, and we find that the water prevailed against the earth. An example, the literal interpretations prevailed against the oral interpretations. Let us continue. It states in Zohar, Bereshis A, in a section called, You are my partner. In the beginning, Rebbe Shimon opened the discussion with the verse, and I have put my words in your mouth, an example, the oral Torah. Yes, Yahu, chapter 51, verse 16. How important it is for a person to study laboriously the Torah day and night. It is very important because the Holy One, blessed be he, listens attentively to the voices of those who occupy themselves with the study of the Torah and every word that receives a new interpretation by a person who dwells into the study of the Torah and this creates a new firmament. Commentary. He robs by literal interpretation alone. The Holy One, blessed be he, of these firmaments, which are created by new interpretations, which creates new firmaments, an example, new insights. And Likutei Amaran states, in lesson number 12, part 1, Yaakov kissed Rachel and wept aloud. And Rashi explains, he foresaw with the Holy Spirit that she would not be buried with him. Rachel alludes to the oral Torah, for she corresponds to speech, Asiya and Malchus, to the Shekhinah, the Divine Presence. She is Rachel, the Lamb, before her shears, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. Everyone shears and extracts laws from her, as Tikkun al-Zohar, Tikkun number 21 states. The laws become garments, as it is written in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 26. Sheep shall provide your garments. And also in Isaiah chapter 3, verse 6, you have garments and you will be our leader. It continues. This is the meaning of Yaakov kissed. He is the Tana, an example, the sage. An example, Yaakov, who is Tifereth, the written Torah. Rachel, she is the oral Torah which he originated. He kissed and bound his spirit with the Holy Spirit in the divine presence. The Talmud compares this to someone who drinks very old fine wine. Even though the wine has been drunk, the taste lingers on the lips. And so too, the one who has originated Torah insights, though he has departed from the world, his power of speech lingers on his lips and the repetition of his words is aroused. We find the aforementioned passage found here in Likutei Amaran, and it states, This corresponds to Yaakov kissed Rachel and wept aloud. Rashi explains, He foresaw the, with the Holy Spirit that she would not be buried with him. Rachel alludes to the oral Torah, for she corresponds to speech, to the divine presence. She is as a Rachel, a lamb, before her shears, as mentioned in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. Everyone shears and extracts laws from her, as mentioned in Tikkun 21 of Tikkun Azor. The law becomes garments, as it is written in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 26. Sheep shall provide your garments, an example, the oral Torah. And as in Isaiah chapter 3, verse 6, you have garments and you will be our leader. When a virtuous individual studies the Tana's teaching, the Tana thus kisses him. And he kisses the Tana and brings the Tana great delight as in, his lips move in the grave. This is the meaning of Yaakov kiss. He is the Tana, an example, the Torah scholar. 
Rachel, she is the oral law which he originated. He kissed and bound his spirit with the Holy Spirit in the Divine Presence. It states here in footnote 27, her shears, just as a lamb is sheared, yet the wool grows back, one can keep reviewing the oral law and constantly find new and original thoughts therein. From which it was described in the Zohar that new interpretations of the Torah create new firmaments. As it states here in the Zohar, in Bereshis A, section the prologue, 11, you are my partner. It states, Bereshis, Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion with the verse, and I have put my words in your mouth. How important it is for a person to study laboriously the Torah day and night, very important, because the Holy One, blessed be he, listens attentively to the voices of those who occupy themselves with the study of the Torah, and every word that receives a new interpretation by a person who dwells in the study of the Torah creates a new firmament. We have already learned that at the moment when a novel interpretation in the Torah is presented by any person, that word ascends and is met before the Holy One, blessed be He. And the Holy One, blessed be He, receives this matter and kisses it. He also adorns it with 70 graven and inscribed crowns. And this new word of wisdom that is revealed is then set upon the head of the righteous who lives forever. Then it flies off and floats through the 70,000 worlds until it reaches Atikyomen, which is the sphere of Kether. And all the words of the Atikyomen are words of wisdom, comprising sublime and hidden mysteries. Regarding those new firmaments and the sheep's garment, it states, just as the shorn wool is made into garments, the oral law, the teachings of the Siddiquim, become the garments for one's soul. Rabbi Nachman thus taught that after a person passes away, the Sadiq has the power to give this person one of the Sadiq's own garments to which to clothe his own soul. Now it continues. And he foresaw with his Holy Spirit, which he took from his mouth and put into the oral law, and saw that in the exile the learned are generally unworthy people. Consequently, the studying in which they engage causes the Holy Spirit of Rachel, the oral law, not to enter the grave. For the Tana's lips do not move in the grave from the wicked man studying, and because of this he wept over his exile. Furthermore, there are even times when the learned individual will teach an original insight in his own name instead of crediting the Tana. As a result, he does not enter the grave with the Tana, for he does not say it in the name of the one who first said it. And so it states here, Learned unworthy in which they engaged. Rebbe Nachman taught in earlier generations Torah study even had the power to protect people from death as it did for King David. Yet now we find that people pass away while they are studying. No, he said, even today, if the Torah is conducted properly, it still has its great protective powers. But if not, if a person does not study as he should, God forbid, then his studying only serves to strengthen the other side. This is especially the case when that which he studies is the Talmud. This is because Talmud has the same numerical value as Lilith, in example 480. The Talmud can either subdue the Klipot or cause the person to be subdued by it. The Midrash states that prior to the destruction of the temple, there were 481 study houses in Jerusalem. The Torah's outnumbering the Klipa Lilith alludes to the power which holiness had to subdue evil forces. At the beginning of this section, it discusses the power that derives when a person is involved in proper study of the oral Torah, linking themselves to the Kabbalah, which is the quality of Rachel, and when it is improperly studied, in which a person becomes a scholar demon. Now the speaking spirit, the living soul, comes from the oral law as it is written, let the earth bring forth a living soul. An example, the earth, which is the oral Torah, as in, and the earth opened its mouth. 
Consequently, when the Tana originates some insight and verbalizes this insight, the speaking itself is in an aspect of oral law which he originated. For that is where he drew it from, as in let the earth bring forth a living soul. An example, and let the oral Torah bring forth a living soul, because it is a vessel for the quality called Chaya, and the secret of, and wisdom gives life to its possessor. So that now, when one studies this insight and brings the learning and insight into his mouth, the result is that the spirit of the Sadiq who originated the insight binds itself with the speaking spirit, with the words of the one who is now studying the insight. The binding of spirit with spirit is called Neshikin, meaning kisses. We find that when a person studies the Shema Allah, which the Tanaim instituted, through this, the spirit of the Tana binds itself with the spirit of the one studying. It is as if he exchanges kisses with the Tana. However, of the scholar demon who studies the Talmud or legal decision it is written, the kisses of an enemy are profuse. This is because the Tana cannot tolerate the spirit of a scholar demon. For who could stomach exchanging kisses with a carcass, especially when a carcass is better than he? This refers to those who study in literal interpretations, which if you have seen the previous video posted discussing the secret of the oral Torah is forbidden. A carcass is better than he. The Siddiquim, even after their passing, are considered alive. And, but when the wicked, even when alive, are considered dead. Thus, the scholar demon is considered dead, a living corpse, and even lower than a corpse as mentioned in Berachot 18a. In the Talmud, he's quoting this specific section. But the dead know nothing at all. This refers to the wicked who even in their lifetime are called dead and who know nothing at all. An example, they take no heed of the fact they will one day die and have to give reckoning. In note seven, it quotes a Midrash. It explains why the wicked are considered dead in their own lifetime, because they see the sun shining and do not bless God for it by saying, who forms the light? They see it setting and do not make a blessing. Who brings on evenings? They eat and drink and do not bless God for it because of their lack of spiritual sensitivity. They are considered dead. Thus, we may now understand some of the deeper things that were mentioned in the gate today. With this, we may understand how these literal interpretations build religious institutions and they take up the nature of the scholar demon. And in those institutions, which the Zohar described as the mixed multitude, specifically the Yeshivot, which are the houses of study, in these houses of study, the Talmud is engaged. And the Talmud, as we just learned by Rav Nachman of Breslov, has the power to strengthen the Klipot of the other side, specifically the quality of Lilith. With this, we may also understand what it referred to when it was stated here that he hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the Tan in Gadol, and a person becomes like Pharaoh, an example, a tyrant, when the other side is strengthened from which he is rooted inside of. This all comes about because of the written Torah, which was the secret of, and I will write these words upon the tablet of your heart. That tablet, of course, is stone, in absence of the oral Torah. However, when the oral Torah is united with the written Torah, it is written, I will remove your heart of stone and give to you a heart of flesh. And that leads us into our next section, which is part three, the mother's Torah, which we will discuss in our next video. Consider very carefully what has been stated here and the great evils that come about through literal interpretations. Contemplate very carefully why our sages said it was forbidden to read the Torah without a commentary. With all this being said, Shalom and Salah.